because I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins just as the scripture has said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had born, been born out, uh, excuse me, last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. So he says in verse 10, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. For I have worked harder than, than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach or we all preach the same, for we all preach the same message you have already believed. And so he's, he's just sharing the gospel. And I wanted to just talk to you right quickly. What happened after the resurrection? He offered revelation. According to this passage and, and several other in the gospel, there was at least 516 eyewitnesses uh, at several different uh, opportunities over the 40 days between when Jesus rose from the dead and when he ascended to heaven. And if you look at when the when this book of First Corinthians was written, it was around 55 A.D. is what uh, most theologians have uh, dated it as, and, and it means that when Paul wrote this, he was as he was listing these eyewitnesses, uh, he was writing this between 20 and 25 years after the resurrection. And so when he talked about the eyewitnesses, he said some of them are, uh, have passed on, but most of them are still with us. So what he was saying is there's plenty of opportunity for them to, to debunk what we're testifying of and what we're talking about. And then he goes on a little, little further, and he, he's just sharing with them about different ones as he's, as he's listing them. And it, what it tells us is that, uh, that these uh, eyewitnesses, this was written during their lifetime. And then when he mentioned James, it's important that we understand James, the book of James that we have in our New Testament was written between 45 and 49 A.D., according to most uh, studies. And so that would mean that his testimony of the eyewitness uh, of the resurrected Jesus would have happened just 12 or 16 years after the fact. So uh, there's other testimonies of Jesus' appearance, and, and it tells us that, that he wanted to encourage the New Testament church and direct them on how the future of the church was going to be. I love it that when God calls us, he doesn't leave us stranded all by ourselves to just try to figure out how to make it on our own. Amen. He always wants to help uh, us to accomplish what he has for us to do. So if you notice... Jesus didn't shout his love from heaven. He doesn't just stand in heaven and just shout it out. He came to them and he began to show his love here on earth. I loved what the Sunday school lesson was about this morning, about the church loving one another and sharing in love with one another. And, and what a powerful thing that is because what we know today as Jesus continues to show his love, he does it through the church, amen, as uh, whoever cries out to him, he will answer, and then the, we, we know that he's still the ever-present, very near, the always attentive uh, to our cry, he's our savior, he's the one who's constantly ready to hear us when we hop, cry out to him, and he will heal our hearts, can somebody say amen? amen. So he revealed himself to him. he also offered relationship, in Luke 24, uh, verses 13 through 34, you don't have to turn there, <clears throat> but we read of two men who were walking down the road, and I shared a little bit about this last week, but as they were walking down the road uh, on the way to Emmaus, the Bible says that as they were walking, that Jesus came alongside them and joined himself to their conversation and he walked with them. He discussed with them what was going on. He opened up the scriptures so that they would have a better understanding of the current events of their day and what was going on because they had just heard the news that Jesus
Jesus uh, was risen from the dead. But as they were walking, they didn't know who they were walking with. They didn't realize who he was because God uh, withheld that information from them. And so finally, he paused to share a meal with them. And it was at this time as he began to bless the meal that they recognized who he was. And the Bible says that he vanished from their sight. And so he came to dwell with them, to walk with them, to communicate with them, even to eat with them. And then we see in John chapter 21, another time when all the dis or several of the disciples were together and Peter was kind of in this place of, of discouragement or whatever and he says I'm just going fishing I, I love how King James says I go a fishing I, some, sometimes you don't know what to do just go a fishing amen just go a golfing just go a softballing just go a shopping just go a whatever sometimes we, we just say I got to get my mind off of this I got to just go on and I loved it that even in the midst of that Jesus showed up there too amen they fished all night, the Bible says, and as they were fishing, as they were uh, trying to, to uh, catch the fish, Jesus hollers from the bank and says, uh, have, you, have you tried this? Have you, tried? And you, know, you know how it is when somebody, when you've had a bad night and somebody tries to tell you how to do things. And, and then all of a sudden John says, look, I think that's the Lord. And so what did Peter do? He jumped out of the boat one running across the uh, low part of the water and shallow end, and he just kept going until he got to Jesus. And the Bible goes on and tells us that as, as he went to Jesus, that Jesus not only gave an abundance to those that were fishing, but he also provided them breakfast. Sometimes you just need a biscuit to help, help you have some time of encouragement with somebody. And so Jesus is there ministering to them again at a meal. And as he was doing this, you, you see in both of these examples that Jesus was coming to people in times of discouragement, in times of difficulty, in times of uncertainty, but he comes to us to show us that no matter what we're struggling with, He still cares for us. Amen. He still cares for where you are. And so so in, in our day, you, you've got to understand that, that God still wants to move through the church and He still wants to operate through you and me as the church. So, so every time that you offer a caring hand to someone, you're being uh, an example of showing the love of Christ. Amen. Because there's a lot of people, uh, brothers and sisters in the faith, like we've seen this morning and like we see from, from day to day, who, are, who have difficulties and struggles. Amen. Don't get me wrong. As believers, we're, we're to reach out to those uh, uh, that are lost and hurting. But uh, scriptures also are very clear in telling us that as a church, we need to edify one another and encourage one another and bless fellow believers and encourage them in the faith. Because how can we help the world if we can't help each other? Amen. And so every time you pray with another believer, every time you provide a meal for someone who's going through surgery, every time Time you show up at a funeral service or send an encouraging text or do anything like that, you're offering the same fellowship and community that Jesus offered to his disciples. He says, I know that you're hurting. I know what you're going through. I'm just here to encourage you and to let you know that I'm with you. So he offers not a re revelation, but also a relationship. And then he offers uh, reassurance because when he appeared to his followers, it's important that we understand he didn't get frustrated with them. Amen. We get frustrated with each other. They ought to know better than that. They ought to act better than that. They ought to do this. They ought to do that. They ought to be just like me. We, we look from our perspective and get so frustrated at everybody else. But what we've got to see is Jesus never got frustrated because if you really notice, instead he simply met them where they were. He consoled the women who were weeping at the tomb. He reassured his disciples who were hiding out in a locked room somewhere. He returned at a later time to come back just to ease Thomas's doubts because Thomas wasn't there. But let me go even further. He filled me with his spirit when I thought he was so disappointed in me and that I could never be of any use to him. He renewed Crystal's faith when she was going through a, a low point in her life. Amen. He, he saved you when you thought that you had gone too far for his mercy to reach out to you. He's brought awakenings to nations and people groups around the world that seem so far beyond his reach. Amen. He's bringing revival to this church and to other churches around the world because he is just 
showing that he is someone who knows what we're going through. He still brings joy in our sorrows. He still brings peace in our chaos. He still brings forgiveness for our sins. He brings us strength in our weaknesses. He brings a way where there seems to be no way. He brings hope for our future, confidence in our Savior, and a home for our eternity. Amen. Why? Because Jesus is all about bringing reassurance to his people. Hallelujah. Woo. Good stuff right there. Amen. Amen. Then he brings restoration. Before the crucifixion, we see Peter denying Christ three times. And then after the resurrection, we read there in John chapter 21, where I was just talking about after the fishing excursion, Jesus brought Peter over to the side and restored Peter back by asking him three questions. He had, he had denied him three times, so Jesus just asked him three questions. Do you love me? And then he, he finally instructed him on how to show that love and how to care for his people. After the crucifixion, we see the disciples hiding out in fear. But after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to them multiple times. And at these visits, he brought restoration to their boldness, to their confidence, uh, their faith, their testimony, and, and their love for him. In these passages, Jesus was just simply demonstrating that just because Peter failed and Thomas doubted and the rest of the disciples feared, it didn't disqualify them for what Christ had for them to do just because you've been through what you've been through just because you've uh, made some decisions that you've made just because you've done some things that you've done doesn't disqualify you from the ability of our God who can do the impossible who can work in your life and do something through you that you never dreamed he could do amen it's not too late for you amen and he stands ready always ready to come to uh, anybody who will just have a repentant heart. Amen. Peter displayed a weak faith. Thomas displayed doubt. The disciples demonstrated fear, but Paul later encourages the church in this. He says, we can trust this one thing about the Lord, that the power of God is made perfect in our weakness. Amen. So he brought revelation. He brought relationship. He brought restoration uh, and reassurance and restoration. And then he... In Acts chapter 1, we see he offered release. And I won't read all of that, but they start asking him, well, is this the time when you're going to uh, let your kingdom, restore your kingdom? And he says, it's not time. It's not the, for you to know the times and seasons. He said, but I, I'll tell you this, you'll receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. And he, he begins to share that. And then he was taken up in a cloud, and as they Strained to see him rising into heaven, the Bible says, two white robed men, two angels suddenly stood among them and said, men of Galilee, why are you standing here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus uh, who, who's been taken away, he's, he's going to return in the same manner. Amen. He, as you've seen him go, he's coming back. Amen. So right before Jesus ascended, he released his disciples to go and do the work he wanted them to do. He says, now... Now that I'm leaving, I want you to do some work. There's some, there's some souls to be won. There's some uh, work to be done. But a lot of times we, uh, over the years, have overlooked, a lot of people overlook the fact that he instructed them first to go to Jerusalem and be empowered. He said, tarry until the Holy Spirit's poured out on you and, and then go out and do the work that you're called to do. Amen. There are some today who teach that this experience is not for today, that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, is an old-fashioned thing, but I want you to understand I can testify firsthand of the fact I didn't see Him rise from the dead, but I've seen His Spirit poured out in my life, in Crystal's life, and other people's lives. Amen. The power of God that, that has been poured out so that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and until he comes again amen he wants to empower you amen so if by faith you will ask and seek and knock then he promises that you will receive you will find and you will uh, uh, receive his uh, that power opened up unto you because when Jesus rose from the dead you and I he, he have discovered that he reveals himself to us he brings relationship to us he reassures us he restores us and then he releases us out into the world to proclaim this gospel of the kingdom.
kingdom. Amen. There are some people you work with that need to hear about Jesus that only uh, God wants to use you to bring them to him. Amen. There's some family members you may have like uh, Brother Lynn testified that that uh, God will open the door for you to uh, be that bold witness. Amen. And you let the power of God work through you and I promise you you'll see greater things as Jesus said greater things shall you do because I go to my father amen amen just because he rose again we don't just look back over our shoulder and say well remember how it was it's so wonderful to commemorate that as I said last week amen but we've got to understand there is currently work to do well how long do we work until he comes either calls us home or he comes back and gets us amen you keep working for the Lord hallelujah can somebody say amen Woo! amen praise God Bless the Lord, oh my soul.